What we're going to talk about today is potentially contentious. In fact, I did a bit about uh, Mo Farah this morning, did a little TikTok about that, and that was on the news. Things happen in the world to cover off other things happening they don't want you to know about. There's a war going on in Europe, and it's not, it's not as covered as much. There was a big fear when all this started that it would almost become normalised. All over Britain, Britain settled into the BBC News Evening Bulletin on their radios. But when they flipped on, they were met with a message that says, Good evening. There is no news. Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week in the podcast. I would say as always, but for the first time in a long time, with both Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, we've got the whole the whole gang together, which is fantastic. That sounds like a great reference, doesn't it? <laughs> Someone's got to keep these two in check every so often. This is yeah. it. I'm glad you're back. Glad you are back. Thank you, of course, everyone out there for listening and watching. Um, follow us on Twitter at listen to Ian, listen T-O-I-N. We are on all podcast platforms or on YouTube. And, of course, we are live every week on a Tuesday, give or take around about 6 o'clock on TikTok. Just follow Joe, J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. And you can follow us there as well and see Joe during the week nearly every day as well because he loves a bit of social media. So... As Ryan hasn't been here for about three months, it must be Ryan's topic. So what are we talking about? What we're going to talk about today is um, potentially contentious. Um, and it's real world stuff. We're going to, I'm going to take a week off of the um, kind of self-improvement direct um, topic line that we tend to tend to churn out on this podcast quite well. Um, and I'm going to talk about the news. I'm not going to give you headlines or anything like that. <laughs> okay. I've, you know, I think a lot of people realize this generally speaking, but there's always something happening. Always. If it isn't COVID, it's potentially World War Three. If it isn't World War Three, it's potentially... Um, especially in the UK, our prime ministers and governments in discretions. And if it isn't that, it's his replacements. And if it isn't that, it's a heat wave at the minute. And if it isn't that, then it's um, some poor young boy getting trafficked into the country and becoming a dump of double Olympic champion. And that's somehow newsworthy. I, there's always something. And don't get me wrong. News exists every day. The world's massive. Things happen all the time. And people have to have stuff to talk about. I completely accept that. But do we think, as a, as a top-level question, things happen in the world to cover off other things happening they don't want you to know about? Ooh, conspiracies. Mm. Kind of, kind of. And I know a lot of people will shut this conversation down straight away and say, as a conspiracy theory, things happen all the time, etc., etc. Fine. But it's almost as if these things, as, these, as certain topics start to boil down, another big topic will start. Such as, as just put on TikTok, nuclear heat wave will leave millions with skin cancer by next year. There we go. That was Judge Durham. Thank you for that. Um, so your, so your view on this is it that you put out a story that grabs people's attention that will probably distract from the real things that are going on? Is that the is that the view? Kind of. I don't want to get too political because I know we've got a um, multinational podcast, but that's often the accusation of Keir Starmer of Boris Johnson, right? Or it has been over the last couple of years or so that he'll spin some story to detract from all the bad stuff that happened during COVID and things like that. And does that happen on a world world basis or at least on a national basis or at least a continental basis? Um, it feels like... Again, this is also contentious, but there are, there are a lot of shootings in America every day. We know this. It's not good. It's not great. We need to kind of, they need to do something to kind of stop it. But it feels like because there was a lot of heat on that, they did a, an even more atrocious thing and overturned their abortion laws, right? Now the heat's off of the gun laws and off of the school shooter stuff and the public shooter stuff. Now it's on their treatment of women in today's world. It almost feels like they get rid of one controversial subject by creating another more powerful one or more relevant one that affects more people. And I'm not one of these people that says COVID wasn't real. It definitely was. 
And that wasn't a detractor from Donald Trump or anything like that. I don't want to get into any of those conversations or people to think that at all. Um, however, nothing happened in the world in those two years. And don't get me wrong. I know, again, I know a lot of things stopped. I know a lot of the world stopped. But billionaires still made money. People still lost jobs. People still had children, lost family members, got married, got divorced, moved house. It all happened. But nothing else really in the world happened in that time, in that year to 18 month period, until the height of COVID was over and it all started with the rundown of how things were poorly managed. And it just strikes me that there's never a non-news day. Wasn't there a day in the UK like 80, 90 years ago where they actually came on the TV and said, there's no news today. And that was, that was it. I'm sure that's an actual thing. I'm not sure there was any TV 80, 90 years ago. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> 80 years ago, mid Yeah, no, it probably was a bit soon. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to Google it. No news day. Okay, see what it says. There is and no what, news. From 1930, 87 years ago, the BBC's news announcer had nothing to communicate. There is no news. <laughs> I never knew that. That's brilliant. Oh, I, I didn't know that. that For Friday, the 18th of April, 1930, at 8.45pm, all people all over Britain, Britain settled into the BBC News evening bulletin on their radios. But when they flipped on, they were met with a message that says, good evening, there is no news. Goodbye. Awesome. Which is, which is, and this is why it's a bit contentious, right? So it feels like there's just stuff happening all the time. And it doesn't mean that these things don't exist and things don't have real world problems or real world changes. But it's, it just feels like it's something after something after something just all the time. And at a, at a, at a point, it must reach a stage where so much is happening that nothing is happening. Right? If, yeah. if you have to do 60 urgent tasks a, a, in your day, none of them are urgent because you've all got the same period of time to do them. And in the same way, if things are continually happening all the time, then is anything actually happening? Just curious on your thoughts on that. You two are quite lateral thinkers, so I'd like to see what your thoughts are. Over to you first, Jose. Uh, for me, I just... I, yeah, I, well, I, I don't think that's the case. I just think they should report with the stuff that gets the most attention. I think that's what they're after. I think for me, it's, I don't think there's any conspiracy. I just think they're going to report on whatever gets the most views and whatever. I think it's a lot about attention. Um, I've tried to limit my news intake, um, although I do watch it. Um, in fact, I did the bit about uh, Mo Farah this morning, did a little TikTok about that, and that was on the news. Um, and I always get stunned, actually. There's, there's a war going on in Europe, and I get stunned by, actually, that's not covered more. <laughs> it's, like, it's like there's a war going on in Europe, and it's not, it's not as covered as much. You it know. screams like it's a huge deal, right? And it it's is a, a massive huge, deal. It's a huge, huge deal. D d d there's a war in Europe. There's a massive deal. And, and, and there are other stories. Of course there are. And, you know, and there are, you know, obviously, the, the abortion laws, the shootings. That, they're, they're really vital stories. I'm, not, I'm not, not here to sort of prioritize news. But there's a war going on in Europe. Like, for me, that's like, why isn't this on the news like every day? <laughs> I don't understand it. But I think it's because I don't know why. Obviously, people are going to, the policymakers are going to do it, but I don't think there's anything hidden. I just think they're going to, they're going to choose stuff because they, because I think now with the modern day of the internet and things like that, I think there's a lot of competition for, for attention. I think the news have to try and maximize whatever they can, the eyeballs on news. And what they're going to try and do is trying to bring in. Um, eyeballs and that's why I just I just think it just comes down to eyeballs and attention um, but for me I think you know for me I think you know the war is, is 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 the I think that's the most prevalent thing that should be in our faces like what's going on um, but that's my view I and mean, that's a view it's an opinion right um, yeah, yeah yeah there, there are wars um, going on all the time in places like Africa and yeah. uh, West Asia and places yeah. like that all the time but we never really hear anything they about yeah, that they don't and there's probably and atrocities we... going on all sorts Pro going on. Proximity plays a part in that. I was speaking Agreed. to someone uh, mm. last week who just come back from living in Germany for two years, and he said it is all over the news there, but that's because of their, their proximity to it. And yeah. it was something, this isn't my main comment, but I saw it. I read something where there was a big fear when all this started that it would almost become normalised, that people just, oh, it's happening, 
because it's happening, you know, it's shocking, but then it goes on for so long that you get used to it and it loses that shock value, which comes back to what Joe said about eyeballs. And it's just, is that what is a, for us, our news media machine in, well, you know, us in the UK, is, is that shocking and meaningful enough for people to get eyeballs? It would be to sell papers back in the day, but obviously it's now to get eyeballs. But for your main part, Ryan, about the sensationalizing bit, and that, you know, there's a lot of that in it. I, I almost think it's the opposite. And I'll use COVID as an example in that they go down and whatever is the biggest story will then get fanned up into being an attractive story, if you like. Sure. Brexit as case in point. So from whenever until the start of COVID, Brexit was all that was in the news. This is going to be the impact. This is going to, it's going to be doom and gloom. How dare it happen? Oh, it's great. It's happened. Best thing ever. Worst thing ever. Some, if you read deep enough, you will find a negative impact to nearly every socioeconomic group for one reason or another. Within work, every meeting I had, what's the impact of Brexit? It was, it was everywhere and it was fed into our brains and it's what every news story is about. COVID hit, <coughs> Brexit did, never mentioned again. And it didn't go away. In fact, it happened exactly like people said it would. Yeah. And it wasn't all over. No, there was there was an impact. You know, we know the supply chain got impact. Unfortunately, about four things happened all at once, of which Brexit was one that caused all sorts of issues. But it wasn't all over the media like it had been because there was a bigger story. And how much of the fear of what was going to happen with Brexit was because it was real and how much was because it was as something to sell eyeballs make you know make you want to read something about it but it went because something came along that had more of an impact was a bigger story etc etc and i think it's more a bit like what you're both saying but they, they need to have content and you almost go down you know you've got a list of stories in one to a hundred and that just keeps going up depending on what, then something more important might come along and jump into the number one spot and be the story and just pushes the others down. But if it, if that wasn't there, what is now number two would be the number one story and was all over it. And I think for me, the, the whole Brexit COVID thing is a busy, biggest example of where the media almost fuels itself by driving a, the need to want to see a story and then delivering that story to people. Yeah. There's an argument that says the more sensationalised things become, there's a, there's a top point. There's a point where that has to start you've reached it that is it there's no more sensationalized you can get about anything and it, it it suggests that things top each other in stages as time goes by and then eventually that's going to reach a ceiling um interesting to see if and when that happens if that's in our lifetime or or whatever um but i i, I see your point i see your point but it almost felt as though covid happened and then, as you say, Brexit went away for us UK people, but it didn't go away, as we know. And it almost felt like it was a happy little, happy little, happy little accident. And you've got government officials that wanted certain things done out of the back end of those deals, rubbing their hands together, saying, well, no one's going to know about this now because COVID's a thing. And they were able to do that. And then, you know, that, and that's kind of, it almost feels as though people are constantly benefiting off of the bad news of others. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I, how that sits with me. It's not very well as a as a starting point. No, but yeah, yeah. go on. It's it's an interesting view. There was it's something else you said, and it kind of again ties into that all. These I think I talked about this in the podcast ages ago. But one of my um, friends did psychology at university, and their like big paper they wrote at the end was to do with the impact of the news on society. Um, and obviously re you referenced like gun crime and stuff in America earlier, Ryan, and th their study was about, it was gun crime and then, but cr I think crime overall might not be gun crime, con crime overall in, and I think it's Chicago, which is on one side of a great lake and then whatever the, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I, think I know on the this. other side. Yeah. So the only thing that separates them is the water, yeah. but the crime levels are night and day. And what his, his theory was that it was due to, the media that america is that sensationalized negative lock your doors watch out and it promotes it promotes the um my headphones out there so it, it, pro it promotes the it promotes the behaviors exactly that 100 percent. yeah i i get that i get that 
just kind of wanted to see what your guys' kind of opinions and, and how you that kind of sat with you, really. Yeah, um, on the, the conspiracy, we used to say, and it, there's great credibility in that, and there's lots of TV shows and dramas you see where they portray that sort of thing out. I just don't think that generally, and not just saying government or organisations, but as a species, we're not smart enough to orchestrate conspiracies on that level. Yeah, yeah. It, and it always feels like news is written in a way to incite a negative response. Like I'm on the BBC homepage now. Gary Lineker stays top of BBC star pay list. Why do I care what Gary Lineker gets paid? <laughs> not really. I'm not going to read that and go, oh, good for him. If I'm ever going to read that. I'm going to go, cool, he earns a hundred times more than I do a year. That's a, that's a blooming joke. Um, it just, yeah, the whole, the whole, Mo Farah thing also confuses that. Why is that a news story? Why is that? Why is that really a thing? Does it need to be a thing? You know, good for him speaking out on his kind of um, childhood and, and and kind of being being honest about kind of what happened, so people know his background. But does that really have an effect on everyone's day to day life? Not really. Does it really matter? It just it, to me, it just feels like it's there for the sake of inciting negative feedback about I, just everything and i can say to you that you know i post that tiktok this morning and i i think for me i i like that story because it's inspiring um but you talk about negativity i don't think the news cares whether it's like you know you like i say i think the news is does try and incite sometimes some fear and i think that's why we've got to limit the, the amount so why so why not try and limit the amount of news because i've always talked about before don't watch your news and limit the amount of it and the second thing is that they don't really care what the opinion is as long as they generate an opinion because attention is attention, attention, attention. That's all they want because they're now competing. The news like the BBC right now, they're competing with YouTube. They're competing with bloggers, vloggers, and they need eyeballs. And ITV and all the people that run commercials need eyeballs to sell advertising space. So it's all about you know generating attention because that's what they need. Now, Mo Farah, I think that's an inspiring for me. That's an inspiring. So I love it because it inspires me. I think well, if you you know, you know, gets gets trafficked into the UK, becomes a double Olympic champion. That for me, that that creates a positive response to me. But I know, yeah. and I told you earlier that also there have been negative posts on that post of mine about that. And I think that's what the news don't care about. As long as there's opinion, that's what I don't care about. For me, I was saying about it because I want there to be, I want people to pull the good out of it. So you can, you know, like you said, go against the negativity because I think you're right. I think it's weighted to negativity. There's a lot of, oh, this is going to happen. This is doom and gloom. And I think that's not good for mindset. And I'm, and I'm pulling it back a bit to the inspiration thing, but that's how I, that's what I think, you know, that's where I think, the news doesn't really care as long as it's getting attention. It doesn't matter what attention. It could be, you know, they've obviously put Gary Lineker up there because he's probably got a decent following, right? There's probably lots of people that like, like Gary Lineker. And people go, oh, like you say, they're going to say, oh, it's not fair that he's earning that because it, or, oh, I love Gary Lineker. He deserves it. So again, it's just that whole bit of creating a discussion and opinion. So that, that didn't, your story stays live, stays there, stays at the top. And that's, that's what they want to get attention. They're rated on how many, how many views they get, how many, how many viewers are watching and paying attention to their articles. And the whole, this is what this whole news thing's generated for is attention, attention, attention. Um, and that's why I think, I think the news has got a bit of a responsibility here. You know, like the issues we're talking about, like, like wars all over the world. There are things going on. There's atrocities, you know, and, uh, you know, I think they could do a lot better uh, than, like you say, probably <laughs> putting out Gary Lineker's wages on the BBC website, you know. But yeah. I think the Mo Farah thing is, I think that's inspiring. I think that helps people. That helped me. And I thought, well, you know, if you've got a dream, he said, well, why not go for it? He did. Um, and I just think, how on earth did he do that? I just But that's my view. That's my view. But, that, I mean, I think the news has got a lot of work to do, and I, I, and I agree with you. But, yeah, so that's my view on it anyway. But I'll hand over to you guys. Lee, you want to fill in with some advertisement? Oh, like the shilling. Do, the shilling. I'd do a bit of shilling last like week. I'd do a shilling last week because Lee weren't here. I'd do the, sh the shilling too. That's what it was. Shilling too. <laughs> I am. Um, and I was just going to say, I agree both on it. And I was just scrolling through some comments on said article. And actually, there was a lot that were quite positive. And some were the same to say it's a great story, but why is it on the news? And like you said, Joe, it is really inspiring. But, you know, there's a space for that sort of stuff as well. So I don't think, you know, 
I'm not I've not got a strong opinion either way, but it's it's, it's interesting seeing actually I presume there was going to be a lot of doom and gloom because it's easy to incite negative comments, but a lot of it was actually the opposite, which is quite pleasing to see actually. Which is great, which is the way that's what I'd like it to be, right? But we've got to be real, haven't we? We've got to be real. There's human beings. Yeah. Indeed. It's across the board, isn't it? Yeah. Speaking of things that are pleasing to see, you could be out wearing your Inspiration Nation t-shirt hoodie, tracksuit bottoms, drinking from your mug, wearing your face mask, whatever you want, just head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. Merchandise there, all the archive, 170 plus episodes now to dive back through. Coaching service, sign up for Joe's new letter. New letter. News letter. We should probably not call it a newsletter now, should we? Sign up for Joe's inspiration letter, which you can get out there every week. Um, that's inspirationnation.org.uk uk and of course follow us on twitter at listen to in listen t o i n followers likes retweets all of that massively appreciated we're on the drive to get our followers up some details of that on there as well we'd appreciate it if you like what you are hearing wonderful good I'm some shield. good shit in there i'm all shielded out okay same right there so um oh i did have a oh i see yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so there's a second part to this conversation and I said I wanted, I was going to keep it away from kind of our usual inspiration kind of side of things. But Joe made a good point about limiting how much he sees um, or how much media he or news he kind of takes in in that, in that, in that format. Now, as we've kind of spoken about it, it to me, and I think that's kind of shared between the three of us, you know, a lot of news is just portrayed in a negative way or at least not in a positive way. Um, and I'm not the, you know, reading something like that or stories that don't really kind of sit well don't really tend to eat at my kind of attitude or how I feel. But I know for a lot of people it will. So I'm interested to see how much you limit yourself to, if you do, the pair of you. And how that, how you've seen that have an effect on yourselves. Okay. Um, for me, I uh, get up in the morning and I will watch a bit of GMTV in the morning. So giving a shout out to, uh, who was it on this morning? It was Susanna Reid and uh, Ed Balls, I think, was on this morning. And what were they talking about? They were talking about the leadership contest. <laughs> Um, and I'll, I got quite bored. And as soon as it gets to the bit of Andy Peters starting to do the the the, the, the commentary, I turn it off. I think, oh no, I'm just bored. So it'll be probably about, I'd say for me, 20, 25 minutes of the day, maybe. Um, and then that I won't watch it for the rest of the day. That's it. Um, I might, you know, if I'm up late, I might watch a bit of news. But I haven't really done that for. A while. But I, I used to watch it a lot, lot more. So I have limited. I did go for a spell. I didn't watch it at all. But I do think there's a point where we do need to become informed. Um, but is that the right media? I mean, we've got so much stuff going on. We've got to be careful with the misinformation, etc. So if you're asking the question, how much do I watch? That's about my limit. Um, I don't like a lot of it. Like you say, Ryan, I don't like it. I don't like it. I want to have a, a mindset that's positive. And I think, like you said, there is a lot of negativity in social media. There's a lot of sensationalizing about things that aren't good that generate fear in the general public. And I don't, you know, and that's not a good thing. I think this, you should be wise. I don't think you should ignore problems, but at the same time, I don't think you should as Lee put it, sensationalize fear because people are fearful enough as it is. We don't need it. We need to be aware of facts and things that we need to know, but we don't need to press fear onto people and things like that. That's what I don't like about it. Um, and maybe they just need to take a tackle. But that's my view on it. Over to you, Lee. Yeah, I um, I used to, I've got like news app on my phone and it used to be part of my routine, not as in structure, but every day I'd scroll through all the headlines on there, probably a couple of times a day actually, go in and read stuff that, that interested me. I think more recent, probably the last couple of years, I've still got that there and I'll still go in and look at it, but it, it won't be daily at all. It's not like a thing in my head that said, oh, I've not looked at the news today. It'll be more, oh, I've got a bit of time to do it. And I almost subconsciously go into it. So relatively informed from like a macro position that, you know, most big news stories happen over a long period of time. But I, I'm definitely not as tapped in on that as I used to be and it, I say it's not something that drives me to have to make sure that I do as well and it's it's difficult because I don't want to say well you should just switch off it for completely because that's better for your kind of mental health and everything because I think it's important to be informed but I'm definitely not you know 
driven by it as much as I used to be. And it's not a, a, a certainly not a focal point for my day, more something I dip in and out of kind of once I've taken care of things that have got a bigger priority to me now that maybe wouldn't have in the past. Yeah. Uh, similarly to you, I don't watch much television, to be fair. Um, most of my stuff's kind of online these days. Um, and if I were going to take any um, kind of news media in, it would be through kind of headlines on my phone and things like that. And if it takes an attraction to me, then I kind of look at it. Um, the point I wanted to raise there is, and I'm glad that the three of us are slightly different in all of it, is that there is no right answer. You know, there is, if you're sat there watching the news and feeling terrible about things, which is, you know, completely acceptable and understandable, then you'll know what to limit yourself to and what is what feels like a fair amount to understand. Is it just headlines here and there? Or is it needing to see everything about a certain story? Or are you better equipped and um, happier to see everything? All of the above is, is perfectly acceptable. But what isn't acceptable is, is letting it overtake your life. Um, so I think just kind of understanding that and taking that as a, as a step forward is um, only going to help you as an individual to live a happier life i think great that's great now, and as i say i think you're right it's not no wrong or right and uh, i just wanted to give a little shout out to um clarky has joined he joins a lot and he, he tends to get our likes up on the tw on the old uh, tiktok so thanks clark you got another shout out hello we appreciate hello. <laughs> that very much he joins a lot he does um he does these uh, football video things, like like inspiring football videos. Loves Manchester United, loves Cristiano Ronaldo. He does does all these things on TikTok. So I just giving a quick shout out. If you do like all that stuff, like Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Formula One, go over and look at that. So it's all cool. Yeah. So it's really good. Thanks, Clarky. Anyway, just give me a shout out. But no, I agree with you, Ryan. Um, I think there's no wrong or right. I think I think the thing you've got to limit your fear. I think you know because you want to have that anxiety, and I think the news can cause that. Um, I think for me, it was, you know, um, when, when when the initial, I know I'm talking about the war again, but when that kicked off, I was watching news a lot right then. I was watching it a lot more than 20 minutes a day. I was, you know, I was on my phone, you know, and I did go for this thing. And I got a little bit, I got a little bit, I must admit, I got a little bit um, anxious about it um, to the point, and I'm not, I've never shared this before, I'm going to share it to the point that I got my wife to order gas masks. That's how bad I got. That's how bad I got. Um, and I returned them afterwards. I thought, what am I doing? Or what, what, what have I done? So just to show you, even though you're guarding your mind, that can happen to anybody. You know, it, it can incite that type of level of fear, I suppose. That's what it was. And you need to be prepared, right? And that, But I still think it's a big thing. And I still think it should be more reported. But again, I do understand Great. that, you, <laughs> you know, you can incite fear. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's my like, big thing on that. Um it's uh yeah it can really influence your thinking so you know you know i'm still learning about myself and i had to rein back from that because you know it's getting a bit bit crazy you know um so yeah that's my view but yeah thanks ryan i really appreciate this, this is a good 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 topic this um i think it's only a good topic absolutely it's slightly different than the, the normal conversation is there anything else there ryan you want to cover off before i do no, i a... think i think we've pretty much nailed it there is a three excellent good stuff we thank everyone out there for joining us again um whatever we are on all podcast platforms just hit that review button hit subscribe um youtube of course follow joe get the videos as they come out not just the podcast but in between as well and on tiktok j noya underscore inspiration nation he's on there every day and he'll give you the heads up when we're going live for the podcast recordings as well so you can get involved and of course once again at listen to in listen to o i n over on twitter we will be back again next week for more inspirational conversation. Hoping all three of us can make it again, which is good. Although I need to drop yep. some holiday news on you guys soon. So we might be uh, scaling back oh, again. Oh, no, no. You That's can't do that. Here we go. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what a cliffhanger to leave things on. I'll count us down. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. We'll catch you guys, you guys later. later. Well, I know now what's your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So, you can catch all our other 
Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. And also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, it's Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.